Today we're going to be building a stage prop of a very large train car that spins around 360 degrees on stage in front of an audience of 800-ish people and there's going to be 10 teenagers on board and none of them are going to fall off and die. And we have three weekends to do it. This isn't a musical Anastasia. There's a very famous train scene where the actors are escaping Russia when the Bolsheviks um, take over. And so there's a big projection on the back wall and it looks like some train tracks are moving and they've got this train car that the actors are you know, escaping on the train car and it, it rotates in different directions depending on what the projection is doing on the, on the back screen. And so it kind of looks like the train's traveling on the, along the tracks even though it really isn't. What I did is this is the this is the most serious project we've done uh, for a show like this is designed the entire thing on the computer in three dimensions. So the train doesn't really look like a train in the conventional sense. It's see through so that the audience can see the actors inside this train while they're on it, as well as letting light from stage lights to get in and light everybody up. So the, the design for this is built out of thin wall metal tubing so that the um, audience can see into the train car while the actors are on there and um, it also allows light and everything from the stage to get in so you can see all of the different actors doing the different things on the train while the scene is going on so there's a little bit of a design from that perspective and the other part is that the scene is set in the 1920s and art deco was super popular design you know art thing back then and so the structure and the train was designed around kind of some par parallel long parallel lines and streamlights it's super loose so in building a train car we couldn't just build a, a big train car that you know would hold 10 people and expect to get it through double doors in a in a theater and then store it backstage easily and so we had to design it so that this large 10 foot by six foot train car could break up into three pieces and then store each piece separately backstage. And there are some challenges to get it to do that as well as being able to spin on stage like it's supposed to. So I was super happy I got to use my new MIG welder. Last year I won this MIG welder from Eastwood just by chance. And so I'm, that's the, this is the first time I'm gonna be able to be seriously using it on a big project. Side note, if you ever enter a YouTube contest, make sure you uh, answer the emails when they send them to you. This is the only reason I won this is because the guy that actually won it or, or the girl, whoever won it, didn't reply to the email. So I was the backup prize. So <laughs> thanks to Eastwood and whoever um, didn't check their email. Appreciate it. And so as you can see, I'm just starting to build the frame section that the actors are gonna stand on top of. And it's the center portion. And you can kind of see there's some double poles that you know, trace around the edge. That's purely for aesthetics and a little bit of structure so it doesn't just look like this metal frame that somebody welded together in the garage. So, so the way I've got this able to rotate only on uh, around a single axis is I've got each of these fixed outside wheels mounted at an angle so that their rotation axis travels through the center of this, you know, square structure. And I did that for all four. You'll see this wheel is aimed a little different than this wheel. And so if you follow the rotation you know, axis between all four wheels, you know, you'll, if you draw an imaginary line between those, they will uh, all intersect in the center of that structure. And so by doing that, that allows this structure to only rotate around one spot. So once I got three separate platforms built, started building the walls and the roof, and one of the other dads in the production uh, has a tubing roller and that allowed him to roll some of the tubing into an archway that we could use as a roof over this train. It was really a, a cool effect and something wasn't planning on that was a kind of happy, happy accident that he had that capability, which is really cool. He also donated all the metal for this project, so that was also really cool. So once I got all three cars, all three platforms and walls and roof assembled together, we had to find a way to make this thing spin on stage. And a lot of the times what you'll see is um, in different productions, they'll just have some of the actors get off the train, rotate at the 90 degrees it needs to and get back on the train, or they'll have some stage hands come out and rotate it 
you know, and they're wearing black and you supposedly don't see them. We didn't want to do that. That was way too easy. So the plan here was to make this train be able to rotate all by itself without anyone getting off. And so it was either going to be electric or ultimately what we decided to do is a mechanical crank and chain system. So the plan here was to use a third wheel that we could use to drive the system or this whole sys assembly in a circle while it's on stage, while people are on. People are on. I used some cam latches, got on Amazon for pretty inexpensive. They did a great job of holding each of the three sections of car together so that they rotated as one chunk of a unit. So once we got to the theater, I ran into a big problem um, with the weight after all these kids got on top of this platform, it did some, started doing some funny stuff to the, my, my chain and my drive system. Once all these people get on it, the weight of that translates to this axle. The tire kind of bends up a little bit. And so what that does is creates a whole bunch of slack in the chain. So when they're trying to turn around, the chain pops off constantly and so we've been trying we've been trying a few different de, you know derailleur type stuff the first one here is just this little bracket with some washers and some rubber grommets in there to kind of hold the chain so as you can see the three cars came out from backstage really pretty quickly and set up pretty quickly once that was done the actors could climb on board and the, steam, and the scene can start. Another little challenge was near the end of the scene, the scene ends with the actors climbing onto the outside of the train structure and then jumping off because the, you know, the Russian agents are, are searching the train trying to find them, so they jump off the moving train. That was kind of fun, and we had to make sure that the train was weighted such that it didn't fall over while these actors are you know, hanging off. So I didn't realize until the build was done that the GoPro I was using to record uh, had died, although it was still powered on and still telling me it was recording, it did not in fact record some of the footage. So I missed a bunch that I'm bummed about, but I did record after the show this little clip of the of the train car working and rotating in my driveway so that's a little bit fun i can't show the actual video footage because it's you know copyrighted but maybe i'll be able to link a clip to the theater groups uh, so when each of these cars are backstage they are jacked up onto a set of freewheeling casters so they can roll around and do whatever they need to do um, you know, to get backstage and then get back onto the stage where they're positioned and getting ready to deploy these fixed casters that are on each of the corners of each section of the train car. And to do that, I just designed a simple lever that you can step on with your foot. So it's a bar that you step on and that pushes those freewheeling casters down and lifts up the structure off the ground. And then some little gravity fed little kickstands drop down and hold the structure up on those freewheeling casters so then they can go, so those can go back and be put backstage. And then when you wanna bring it from backstage onto the stage, you roll everything out and you step on the, you know, step on the lever and I've got a little string that you pull and it pulls the kickstands out from underneath where they were wedged and then the whole structure lays down or sits down on the ground on its four fixed wheels. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Am I dirty? <laughs>